12 thrilling movies for xenomorph or alien lovers who will surely love every movie in this list. When Ridley Scott's Alien came out in 1979, no one could have anticipated the kind of fan following it would accumulate over the years. Alien has since then inspired countless other monster movies and alien movies, all trying to achieve the iconic status of the original, but most of them failed. It continues to remain a class apart. Nonetheless, there are gems to be found even amongst alien 1979 wannabes. Here are 12 movies that definitely draw inspiration from Alien and then interpret it and customize it to their own way. A kind of monster movie DIY, if you will, with the key ingredient being gruesome and grotesque creatures. No monster movie can surpass Alien, but these movies put up a good fight, and they deserve to be noticed. So, if you loved Alien 1979 and you're looking for similar movies, if you're a fan of creature movies, or even if you love sci-fi, we promise that you're going to love these movies. So sit back, relax, and tell us why you should not miss out on them. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. One, Pandorum, 2009. It's 2174. Earth is overpopulated, and all its natural resources are finally completely exhausted. With no other way out, a spaceship called Elysium is sent to another planet called Tanis in search of friendly creatures to extend a helping hand. They'll see who or what they find. The journey to outer space is long and tiring, and so the crew takes turns to sleep. But when two of the crew members wake up due to technical difficulties, they find to their horror that they are locked in their own room. To make matters worse, they soon realize that they're not alone in their spaceship anymore, and it's been taken over by some mysterious entity. Pandorum is one of those movies that manage to master both genres, horror as well as sci-fi and managed to do it well. The movie is scary and dark, both literally as well as metaphorically. The plot unravels slowly and keeps the audience on the edge of their seats. This state of confusion makes them even more vulnerable to the horror elements. The details of the alien inhabitants are never made clear either. You have to keep guessing along with the crewmates. The tensions run high in this movie, and we may even go so far as to call it a psychological horror with a sci-fi backdrop. The fear element of the movie is sourced by tapping into a lot of deep-rooted psychological fears, such as claustrophobia, memory loss, and loneliness. The internal struggles of the protagonist gel well with the external threat posed by the alien, and together, they create atmosphere of both psychological as well as physical horror. The performances by Dennis Quaid and Ben Foster's are excellent, the characters are likable, and the sci-fi world-building was done with detail. Pandorum references a lot of ideas from Aliens vs. Predator and Alien, but the end is completely unexpected. It's a twist that you won't see coming at all. Two, Event Horizon, 1997. It's 2040, and humans have managed to make the moon and surrounding planets inhabitable and are making spectacular progress in science and technology. A spaceship called Event Horizon sets off to test the limits of outer space, but disappears under mysterious circumstances beyond Neptune. Unable to establish any contact with them for several years, the entire crew was presumed to be dead. It was one of the worst space accidents. Now, seven years later, Event Horizon reappears just as mysteriously as it had disappeared. 
when the Space Center receives a garbled audio transmission from the lost ship with inhuman, incomprehensible screams, a rescue team is immediately put together. The mission of Lewis and Clark is to go on board the ship, find out what happened seven years ago, and bring back survivors, if any. But, as they reach the ship, they realize that Event Horizon has brought back something unspeakably terrifying and evil from outer space. Did the original crew survive? And will this new crew make it out alive? Event Horizon is another movie that brilliantly manages to combine sci-fi and horror. There's enough in it for the science geek. Black holes, dimensions, and of course, outer space travel. Event Horizon is directed by Paul W. Anderson, who is also the director of other sci-fi movies such as Resident Evil and Alien vs. Predator. It is an underrated gem tragically bypassed by mainstream media. The horror in this movie doesn't come from grotesque CGI creatures. Instead, it comes from the gut feeling of unease and discomfort that's present throughout the movie. The unseen evil is never fully visualized, and it's this vagueness and ambiguity that adds to the ominous atmosphere. The plot is simple, not too complicated, and the cinematography and lighting only add to the experience. This is one movie that is guaranteed to make you sleep with your lights on after you watch it. You! You did it! Give me that knife. You're not human! Everybody's dead! What happened? What is it? 3. The Andromeda Strain, 1971. When a U.S. Army satellite falls from space to Earth and lands in New Mexico, what no one is expecting is for it to have brought something back from its travels in space. Scoop 7 comes to Earth with a deadly extraterrestrial life form that ends up killing all the residents in New Mexico except for two an old man, and a crying baby. An emergency is declared, and the life form is taken to a secret underground high-tech facility named Wildfire, where it can be researched upon. Now a team of scientists must race against time to isolate the life form and try to figure out how the two people survived and how to stop the threat from escalating. What they don't know is that the life form has already mutated, and if they don't invent an antidote in time, it could be too late. The Andromeda Strain is based upon the book written by Michael Crichton, and it was directed by Robert Wise, the director of well-known classics such as The Haunting, West Side Story, and The Sound of Music. The movie is captivating from start to finish. Every single element complements each other so well to come together to form the masterpiece that is the Andromeda Strain. The music, the atmosphere, the solid performances by the ensemble cast, they all work together perfectly. The thrill and rush of chasing the clock keep you glued to the seat. It's believed that during the production of this movie, Michael Crichton was given a tour of Universal Studios by Steven Spielberg, who eventually ended up adapting Jurassic Park, Crichton's best-known novel. Four, Life. 2017. Life is the story of a six-member team of the International Space Station that's on a mission to collect data to check the possibility of life on Mars. They are successful in their mission when they discover a single-celled organism in a soil sample. They take back the sample with them to carry out their research, but their techniques lead to unfortunate consequences. The alien life form grows and mutates rapidly into a multi-celled organism, and the scientists realize with horror that it is far more intelligent and dangerous than they were expecting. Life stars big names like Jake Gyllenhaal and Ryan Reynolds in the lead role as the scientists. The plot of the movie is realistic. It's just regular humans trying to deal with an extremely unpredictable alien to the best of their abilities. 
The creature design is interesting, and a big-budget movie means the special effects were better than average. Visually, the movie is stunning. Interestingly, an organism called tardigrade can and does actually exist in conditions similar to the one shown in the movie. Tardigrade can survive extreme radiation levels, can mutate into glass to protect itself from dehydration, can survive space and pressure vacuums, Five, Galaxy of Terror, 1981. A spaceship malfunction causes Remus to engineer an emergency landing on a planet called Morganthus. Even after they've landed, they can't seem to figure out the cause of the technical glitch in their spaceship. Effectively stranded, they decide to explore the new planet they landed on. Big mistake! On the new planet, they find their worst fears are manifesting themselves into reality to attack them. As they keep finding murdered bodies of their crewmates on board their ship, the remaining members must stick together to try and figure out how to escape. Can they still find a way off this planet, or is it already too late for them? This one is for the old-school horror movie fans. It checks all the boxes. Disgustingly gross monsters, lots of graphic violence, and a borderline nonsensical storyline that keeps you hooked throughout. The movie is sleazy and outrageous and makes no effort to conceal it. The original rating to this movie was X, which was then changed to an R after some editing. This is the movie with the iconic or notorious scene of a huge slimy worm-like monster explicitly sexually abusing and killing the beautiful blonde bombshell of Toffee O'Connell. In fact, this scene caused a huge scandal when it was first released. The future director genius James Cameron worked as an art director in this movie and was responsible for the production design. This movie is an absolute slash fest, and it's your go-to movie if you're not looking for a plot, but for some mindless blood and gore with some sick alien creatures. Leviathan, 1989. Set in the future, Tri-Oceanic Corporation is an international company that has hired miners for an undersea mining operation in the depths of the Atlantic Ocean. Deep under the sea, the miners discover a wrecked Russian cargo ship. The next day, one of the team members wakes up complaining of strange body aches. He discovers gruesome lesions growing on his back, and he dies soon thereafter, but no one knows why. As news of his death spreads, and more members start falling sick, the crew realizes something horrifying. A contagious genetic mutation is spreading, which turns them into grotesque undersea creatures, and it all came from the cargo that they unearthed. Leviathan is an Italian-American creature film that's directed by George P. Cosmatos, who was also the director of Rambo First Blood Part Two. Leviathan is often compared to John Carpenter's The Thing and to the movies The Abyss and Deep Star Six, possibly because they all came out around the same time and because the 80s were the decade of alien films. However, of the hundreds of alien movies made during that decade, this is one of the better ones. The movie is engaging throughout, and although the plot may not be entirely original, the premise is definitely interesting. The special effects are stunning, and visually the movie stands apart. The creature designs are definitely shudder-inducing, and not for the squeamish. Jerry Goldsmith's score in this movie is beautiful and deserves special mention. Of all the movies featuring underwater monsters that were released at the time, The Abyss 1989 was the only one that was a box office hit. But while Leviathan may not be anything extraordinary, it's much better than most of its alternatives. <laughs> 
7. Mimic 1997 Hundreds of children in Manhattan are dying of an unknown disease, and the situation has reached concerning epidemic proportions. It's found out that the carrier of this deadly disease is the common cockroach. And so, an entomologist called Dr. Susan Tyler is called to come up with a solution. For the solution, Dr. Tyler ends up designing a completely new genetic breed of insects. These new insects secrete a fluid that kills the carrier cockroaches. This new species is designed in a way so that they die off after a generation. All is well and good until a few years later. People start to go missing, and dead bodies keep turning up. It turns out that those insects that were supposed to die are now larger, deadlier, and somehow still alive. The superbugs have evolved into grotesque monsters with crazy capabilities, like being able to mimic humans. If this isn't bad enough, the only person who has any idea of how to stop these crazy new species, Dr. Susan Tyler, is now dead. The suspense in the movie is built up continuously and amped up with every passing scene. The scientific angle to the plot is very convincing and realistic. The movie moves quickly, and you don't have to worry about getting bored. The atmosphere of this movie is thick with tension and suspense. The general mood created in this movie is that of gloom, decay, and horror. It's dimly lit throughout, and this does just as much to contribute to the horror. The direction is in the safe hands of Guillermo del Toro, who's known for his love of horror. It also stars Josh Brolin, who came into fame in the late 2010s with his role in the Marvel franchise. In addition to this, the production design and artwork are stunning. The visuals of the grotesque humanoid bugs are pretty creepy. Mimic is a criminally underrated movie that deserves to be clubbed with the other greats of monster horror. Worthless piece of garbage. Eight, Dark Star, 1974. A group of astronauts has been in space for almost 20 years. They were, and still are, on a mission to clear navigation routes in space by destroying or blowing up rogue planets that are in their way. During the course of the movie, an alien unexpectedly turns up, causes chaos, and a bomb suddenly starts malfunctioning and refusing to take orders from the astronauts anymore. They may all now die any minute, but will it be the alien or the bomb that gets them? Dark Star is a movie that takes a satirical and humorous look at the problems and lives of a group of astronauts who have been in space for decades. John Carpenter and Dan O'Bannon made this together while the two were in film school. Later, when they found a distributor, it was expanded into a feature-length movie. Already in this movie, John Carpenter's characteristic style is showing, while Dan O'Bannon went on to be the screenwriter for the mega-hit Alien in 1979, five years later. This movie isn't afraid to show the eccentric sides of humans or the genuine sense of isolation that astronauts face in outer space, topics that are hardly ever addressed in sci-fi movies. The music in this movie is bizarre and inventive and electronic often confused with the noises of the technology on board. The visuals are excellent, given the small budget of a student film, and it's an enjoyable spoof that's also touching and moving in places. Dark Star is a cult classic and can only be described by one word, iconic. It is as relevant now as it was when it was released in 1974, and will no doubt continue to inspire sci-fi movies for generations. Nine, Attack the Block, 2011. South London's Lambeth is home to street gangs and is an area prone to crimes and mishaps. A gang of young boys is in the middle of robbing a nurse when something from the sky crashes into the ground nearby. 
When the gang goes to investigate the crash, a strange creature attacks them and they manage to kill it. Realizing that the creature is rare, they think they could make some money off of it. And so, they go to their drug dealer for advice. But soon, they see hundreds of similar creatures falling from the sky. It's not just one stray alien anymore, but a full-blown alien invasion. Will makeshift homemade weapons and a gang of young boys be enough to defeat an extraterrestrial army? Attack the Block is another take on the classic bad guys turned heroes theme, and it executes it very well. The plot is original, the premise is new and exciting, and the acting is superb. The movie captures the typical upbringing of marginalized teens in the poorer suburb settings of big towns very well. The characters and their struggles can't help but touch your heart. The acting does such a good job of making them appear raw and authentic. The movie by itself is engaging, witty, cheeky, as well as funny. It's an action thriller filled with non-stop entertainment. If you're a fan of rap music, you're going to enjoy the background score as well. This can be your next popcorn flick during a casual movie night. Life Force, 1985. A space shuttle called Churchill is sent to investigate Halley's Comet that only appears every 86 years. When the researchers find another spacecraft-looking object attached to the comet, they send a team to investigate further. They find a casket with three humanoid creatures in it and bring it back to the space shuttle. In the meantime, Earth loses contact with Churchill and so a rescue mission has been sent to retrieve it. The rescue mission finds the crew is dead and brings the strange-looking casket back to Earth. Back on Earth, the humanoid creatures soon awaken, and they turn out to be a kind of vampire that drains the life force out of people and turns them into zombies. Now researchers must find a way to defeat the space girl and send her back to where she came from before England turns into a dystopian nightmare. Life Force is easily one of the most bizarre and crazy movies ever made, and it's also a brave attempt. Its concept is so outlandish, to say the least, and it only gets wackier and wackier as the film progresses. The movie walks a tightrope between being a masterpiece and simultaneously being the worst movie that's ever been made, and it's impossible to decide which one it is. So audacious is the plot that it's impossible to remove your eyes from the screen. To add to that, the main vampire is played by Mathilde May, a beautiful French actress who is naked or almost naked throughout the entire length of the movie. The movie also boasts of Patrick Stewart, not an actor shy of taking up wacky roles. The special effects and the set design are also excellent. This movie is what you get when a group of extremely talented people come together to make a madcap of a movie. It is audacious, it's awe-inspiring, and it's an unforgettable laugh riot. This film elicits strong and extreme reactions. You'll hate it or you'll love it, but you definitely cannot ignore it. Underwater 2020. Tian Industries is making plans to drill seven miles under the Mariana Trench to look for resources. A drilling station is set up underwater, but a gigantic earthquake underwater causes the submarine carrying the crew to rupture and be destroyed. The crew must now tackle water pressure, deadly deep sea organisms, lack of oxygen, and many other hurdles to make their way underwater to another station a mile away if they want to live and they must do it seven miles under the deepest underwater area on Earth, where deadly creatures lie in wait for them. Underwater draws inspiration from, and can be related to, several other classics in the same genre, such as Alien, Deep Star Six, and The Abyss. Judging by its own merit, Underwater does very well. 
The premise is simple and no nonsense. An escape mission set underwater. The atmosphere is creepy and chilling, and there are eerie monsters in tense situations. The creature designs in this movie are excellent, as is the cinematography and the special effects. The movie has a superb performance by Vincent Cassell in a supporting role, but the highlight of the film is Kristen Stewart in the starring role. It is her performance that carries this movie from start to finish. All the criticism that she received following her role in Twilight is obviously from people who haven't seen her work outside of the teen franchise in the early 2010s. She shines in this movie, and her performance is extraordinary. In a nutshell, Underwater is a thriller that does its job well. Twelve, Extro, 1982. A man is abducted by aliens from his own farmhouse while he's playing with his son. Three years later, the same light that abducted the man returns to plant a seed. The seed grows into a human-alien hybrid, who then forcefully impregnates a woman. The belly of the woman swells up to grotesque proportions, and she ends up giving birth to the same man who was abducted three years ago. Now that he's back again, Sam is trying to find his wife and son. But he's not the same person as he used to be before. He's hiding something, but no one knows what it is. Is Sam really the same person as before, and what does he really want? Extro is a movie that's one of a kind. The plot is original and fresh, and also deeply unsettling. It crosses some serious boundaries. The movie is sinister, shocking, and above all, surreal. The scene of a fully grown man being born from a woman is severely disturbing, and there are more like that in the film. The gore and morbidity in this movie has transformed it into a cult favorite and made it popular among lovers of 80s sci-fi movies. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.